Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Visible Visionaries. If you're here, you have interest in being visible for your book, for your business, for your being. And it also means that you're a visionary. You have definitely a mission and a purpose, and it's generally meant to increase the quality of life here on this revolving planet <laughs> that we currently call Earth. And um, yeah, you know, most of us feel very, very called. And part of our mission in getting our message out there, being more bold, being more visible, has included a book and other things. Now, the thing that we all know is we are not experts at everything, nor were we ever meant to be, even though at times as an entrepreneur, it very much feels like there are so many components to figure out and how do you pick and choose what you're supposed to do? But there is one bottom line in all of that. And that is we can feel the pain when we put together all this amazing stuff, but it's not getting out there. It's not getting in the right hands. It's not getting the attention of people it should. And I, I heard something recently and I think it's really apropos and I'll see if I can re-express it correctly, which is, that if you are putting a lot of stuff out there like pasta on the wall and all you're kind of doing is getting likes, it doesn't mean that you have clients, right? You just have people who are like going, you know, good on you, at a boy, at a girl, but they're really not engaged and they're not taking action. And we all want the majority of those who are connected with us to take action. So that's why I brought the guest here, Visible Visionaries, is an ongoing book writing membership. And the clients learn, we get together twice a month live and y'all learn how to write your book, make it a page turner, how to put together everything inside from idea and inception to self-publishing. And this is my area of expertise, that and also how to be interviewed because we need that piece to also become very visible. So I brought aboard today someone I've known for 10, 11, 12 years at least, Chris Van Buren. And he's a really well-known, recognized expert in his field. And what I really love about Chris is that he doesn't just show you as an expert these things, he does these things. Mm -hmm. He is an author and in fact, he just engaged in his own book launch. So it's very exciting to see an expert bridging both worlds as a really well-known teacher, but a doer as well in their own life. The author co-op is what Chris Van Buren runs. It's his specialty to help authors promote and build a mailing list. And two months ago, we had the book literary agent and publisher, Bill Gladstone here. That was amazing. I'm also releasing his interview on my podcast, which was separate. Uh, we went even deeper. And he says over and over, what does he look for when he takes on an author? You could have the greatest book in the world, but meh, if you don't have a significant database, he won't look. And that is not only true for him, I can tell you as an author and also someone in this business, same, you must have this. So this is being recorded. We're gonna discuss several topics and then we will open things up at the end for questions. So if you could mute yourself until we get to the end, that would be awesome. So Chris, first, I just wanna say welcome to the Visible Visionaries. <laughs> Thank you, great to be here. Hello everyone, good to see you all. Excellent. So I'm gonna start out with just sort of generalizations about the importance of email list building versus social media. What's the importance? Are they both important? And mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about the difference? Sure. Um, yes, I get that question a lot. <clears throat> um, they're both important. All, all media, all audiences that you can build are important. Uh, but, it, but it's also important to understand the differences um, and make your priorities about them and around them. Um, I'm not going to necessarily say that building an email database is always better for everyone than social media. But what I will say, though, is that there are um, differences in how they perform. This is just 
a fact, you know, st statistical facts. Uh, email databases will, will give you, I've seen uh, statistics that they will perform up to 20 times better than a social media following. So a, an email list of 10,000 people would be equivalent to, what is that, 20 times that, <laughs> 200,000 people um, in social media following. Um, now that means as in terms of the actual results you get, the, the actual conversions and the clicks and the engagement. Um, and it's not surprising. An email database is people who have chosen to be in your community, receive your emails, they, they therefore trust you, they're on your list, they stay on your list, you know, um, they have the option to opt out, right, to unsubscribe. So if, they're, if they haven't done that, it's because of, you know, they want what you have, they're listening to you. Um, obviously that counts for a lot and email does tend to be more direct marketing so in, and this has been around since before the internet, that this idea of direct versus indirect marketing. Um, in the old days before the internet, direct marketing meant sending mail out to people. <laughs> um, nowadays on the internet, there's a, there are finer lines between what actually is direct or indirect, um, but it's pretty clear that social media followings are indirect. So you're putting out content. Indirect means you're putting out content and you're hoping somebody sees it and you're hoping they'll do something when they see it. Whereas an email being sent directly to someone's inbox is considered direct. You're getting right into that person's inbox. Sure, you don't know if they're gonna open it. You don't know if they're gonna click on something if they open it. Uh, but in the scope of marketing, that's considered more direct than say social media. Now, even more indirect than social media would be like online advertising, like putting an ad out on, on Facebook or somebody else's website. That's extremely indirect. You don't even know who's gonna see the ad, much less act on the ad. Now, that's not to say that all indirect marketing is bad, uh, not at all. In fact, indirect marketing has a very profound purpose and it tends to be around brand building. Um, so the Tend to, it tends to be used by bigger companies that really just want you to, to recognize their brand more. They don't really care as much that you're clicking on something right then and there. You know, they just want, you know, you to remember Coca-Cola, you know, or, or, you know, whatever the, you know, whatever the insurance got, you know, what's the insurance company? I've already forgotten. Geico, that's it. Um, they want that mind share. And so indirect marketing like advertising and Social media uh, does tend to work better really well for that kind of marketing. For the rest of us who need conversion, <laughs> you know, we're counting on that. We're, you know, we're bootstrapping, we're looking at conversion rates, we're, we're you know, we don't have massive budgets just to get mind share. Um, you know, we're probably going to lean more toward direct marketing, you know, those types of options. And email list building is more direct. You're going to get 20 times more results from an email list, a well, a well manicured email list than you would from a social media following. Okay, that brings up two things. So the first is, I really concur because especially right now with Instagram, where you cannot put hyperlinks and Instagram's the hottest thing. I, you know, I'm very visible there right now for obvious reasons and is a lot of gain, but yeah, no hyperlinks and also the best you can do is put in your bio this linked tree, right? And so for those who don't know, you know, just check out my Instagram. In fact, uh, I know some of you already connected with me there. If you're not, connect with me there. And then look at my bio. That's actually the hottest thing to do. Little emoji and a few words about who you are and what you do. Very kitschy. And then at the end, you have a link tree. You can click on mine and see what it looks like. Uh, and what it is, that is the way to get a hyperlinks. I feel like unless you're really like committed to someone, you're not going to get much conversion. So you talked about a well manicured uh, database email list. Man, is this a hot topic? Because the truth is, I, I know I unsubscribe a lot. And it has nothing often to do with how awesome the person or company is. I am just email overwhelmed. And how do we groom people? I'm not, I can tell you right now, I'm not that person who's gonna write a personal blog 
about the latest, I don't know, <laughs> experience I had that you know took me the depths of my being and back. I may be that person in real life, but I don't have the patience to sit there and write that. So how can we engage and connect and get people to say, I wanna still be on your list. I may even recommend it to other people. Well, there are different philosophies. Uh, there's not just one answer. Um, and, and there's validity to all, all of them, I think. Um, so for example, on one hand, um, there's validity, some people will say, and there's validity to this, that, that it doesn't matter. Just uh, if you over, if you over email your list, oh, that's exactly. okay. That's okay because you're gonna get more action out of the people who do, okay. right? Now that's gonna burn what, what we call burning through your list a little more. Yeah. So you're gonna get a lot more opt-outs, but the but you also will get more ac action from the people who are interested. Mm. You see this a lot on um, political campaigns. They'll email the crap out of you and they don't care that you're up, that, that X percent are opting out because they want action from the few that are gonna do something. So if that's the philosophy and that's what you want and you know that that's what you want, that, then that's the option to use, right? Most people in our business, meaning the body, mind, spirit, you know, self-help kind of business, personal and professional development kind of business, that's not what they want. <laughs> they, they wanna keep people in. They wanna keep people who are maybe in, maybe out because down the road they might be in, right? You don't want them to opt out now. You don't wanna turn them off because you know, a month, two months, three months from now, you might have something else that does interest them. So that's more of the philosophy for those kinds of businesses, which is probably most of us, in which case you don't want to do that. You don't want to over, over mail. You want to be very careful about how often you mail and you want to kind of measure the results. My sort of, you know, rule of thumb, if you will, is, um, probably no less than once a month and probably no more than once a week unless you have something special going on, then you can do more than once a week for that time period. So if you have a launch going on, you can mail every day during the launch, but then you stop you know, and, and go back to your, to your once a week or twice a month. Um, again, no, no less than once a month, no more than once a week as your normal flow. I personally, we generally do twice a month for our mailings, but um, we've been going to once a week because it's just been super busy. And I try, I really try not to do more than once a week for, for my lists. Right? Okay. Awesome. Th I like those boundaries. That's helpful. And those who are marketing a book, a film, a product, et cetera. I don't know if it's the same across the board. You can speak to that. What's the most important thing for us to know when we are marketing or even our coaching business or a teaching business or book? Yeah, that's, that's the $10,000 question, actually. Um, there is something, there is the most important thing. And I'm glad you asked that because um, a lot of people miss this. It's, it is clearly by far the single most important thing for all of us to nail. And that is your unique value proposition you've got to nail it and you've got to make it, you've got to articulate it clearly in your messaging. That's the back cover of your book. That's your social media. That's the first few phrases on your website or your book page. That's some of the things you say when you're on the air is you wanna repeat those same unique value proposition messages. And you'll probably have several different ways of saying it depending on who you're talking to. Um, and you might, you know, depending on how broad your audience is, uh, you will probably have a few ways that you say it, um, but being clear on how you do that and being clear on what it is, right? Um, a lot of people, the, the thing about defining and clarifying your unique value proposition is sometimes we're the worst person to do our own, right? It's like editing your own book. It's, it's sometimes the hardest thing. You need somebody from the outside to sort of help you see it so, sometimes. And, um, because we're so close to it, because a lot of times what ends up being your unique value proposition is you, right? Is your personality, is something about you yourself. It's not about what you're teaching. It's not about, you know, the way you're teaching it necessarily. And sometimes it is, but, you know, 90, you know 70, 80% of the time, it's really about you, how you deliver it, 
what your personal experiences are, how you interact with the audience, whether you're funny or serious or shy or outgoing. These are all personality traits that are very important to, to fully be <laughs> and, and fully integrate into your unique value proposition. Some people will respond better to you if you're shy. Some people like that. Some people will respond better to you because of that. So be that if that's who you are. And if it, if it is part of your unique value, um, some people respond better to other personality types. It's, it's important that you let people know what your unique value is. If you have had experiences in your life, even bad ones, if you failed at things, that's part of your unique value proposition. I've tried this a hundred times and failed 99 of them, right? That's a really powerful thing to say. Um, people will want to hear that. They're going to value that, right? Um, or you had some certain kind of training. You know, I'm, I'm from Harvard Medical School. I have a degree in that. That's, that's a powerful, unique value proposition. So you want to be able to evaluate all the things that could, could go into your UVP. And then you want to articulate it in everything you do. Well, I find this really interesting and I'll tell you why, because everything you just said is how I coach my clients, how to write their bios. Now, you know, yes. there are people who get, oh, I don't know where to start. And what, so, you know, first sentence, pal me, like, but tell me exactly who you are and what you do. That's what, that's all I want to know. Mm -hmm. And then let me know your fabulousness. Have you been in magazines, shared this stage with, much like you said, have you gone, gone to Yale or Harvard? Have you received awards? Have you you know, rags to riches. I mean, that kind of stuff is so huge. So I love what you share because it's so easy to repurpose. And here's a little trick. Write down a list of the things you hate about, about your industry. I hate it when people teach this or that or the other. Well, you guess what? That's part of why you do it differently, <laughs> right? So write that down and put that out there. I don't, like here, one, I'll give you an example for me. I, I always... Um, pushed back against marketing people who, and I still, I still do, <laughs> but I used to really articulate this a lot in my UVP, is marketing people that would basically tell you, this is how I made my millions of dollars, follow my footsteps, do what, do what I did. And I say, and I used to hate that. I would say, it, it may have worked for you, but it won't work for them because there's so many differences between you and the other people. You know, maybe you're good on the air and they're not. Maybe you know technology and they don't. I mean, there's a million reasons why it might not work for the next person, even if they follow exactly the formula that you did or that that, you know, that, that guru did. So I, I used to like hate that and push against that. And I would put, put that in my, on my page. Marketing is not a one size fits all equation. I would say that that was my thing, right? Because I hated that. So find if you- Yes, the greatest example of this, Chris, I think is in the weight loss and health industry, where you see someone, I suddenly got buffed and this is what I did, or I suddenly lost weight, nor I got healthy. And I, and it's like these crazy ass concoctions somebody put together that for some reason, you know, God bless, it worked for you. But for so many people suffering out there, paying, 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 it's not healthy, it doesn't work. And I've also been very triggered by that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what triggers you about your industry and other people could be part of your unique value because it taught, because it demonstrates what you do differently and why. And that's yeah. important. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, so many, so much uh, in that unique value proposition. Also remember your personality traits and make a list what you hate in your industry. And ta-da, this is probably what you excel at giving other people. Um, this is, that's a great secret. And don't forget uh, to write down what you've uh, succeeded at and what you failed at, because mm. those are all powerful. What you succeeded at and what you failed at. Beautiful. And also just to reiterate, you mentioned about editing. Thank you so much, because I, I try to explain to all my clients um, in my classes and otherwise, like if you don't have a book professionally edited, you know, it's crazy. Like, yeah, I can't tell you. I just worked with a world-class dog trainer this weekend um, with my dog. This guy is amazing. And when we were done, he, he gave me all this awesome swag, right? He has his 
t his great merch, his gr a great t-shirt with his logo, socks with his logo, you know, doggy this with his logo, it's all beautiful. And then he very sheepishly said, here's my first book, but I'm so embarrassed to tell you about all the typos. And it's like, dude, so you could still hire an editor and relaunch it, you know, but do it right. If you're going to be put all that effort into a book, you must make sure it's professional going out there. Must. Especially, especially if you've decided to self-publish, which is a viable option, you know, for various reasons. Um, it's easy to slack off on certain things when you're self-publishing and getting an editor is one of them and getting a professional designer is another. Don't put out a book that doesn't look professional. Why would you bother doing that? Get it, get it professionally designed so that it's impressive. That's part of what a book is for, is to impress. So uh, an editor and a designer, I would, I would say. Editor and designer. Okay, so ROI strategies for authors. How, and I am so big on this in my life, literally. I've been interviewed probably over 2000 times. I'm at a point where when people come to me and say, well, can I interview this? Literally, I look at my time, my energy, my attention span, and I look at their show and say, is this worth the effort? Because I don't need anything else in my resume. And that is how it is with everything I'm invited to engage in. I always feel blessed, but I really measure just a finite amount of me. I also have my own desires and wishes. So getting a return on investment and ROI is so important. What are the strategies for authors who really want to streamline this to success? Again, there's a couple answers to that. Um, it's not just a one, again, it's really not a one size fits all. It depends on your goals and it depends on what kind of traffic you're getting um, and what you're trying to do with that traffic. Um, now, if, if the goal is, and maybe, maybe most of us here could agree, I want to bring people in to my mailing list so that I can sell them my product or service. Uh, co coaching product or online course or something of, along those lines, a digital product that they'll buy online. Um, that's very common. Okay, so that's a very common one. It's not the only goal and situation, but you still have to look at, well, where's the traffic coming from? If it's coming from an interview, um, you know, a podcast interview, it's going to behave in a certain way differently than if it's coming from somebody's mailing list that's mailing for you. Generally, a mailing list, when you, when you promote to a mailing list, you want, you want to grab as many opt-ins. You want to grab as many of those uh, email addresses as you can, and you want to bring them into your opt-in funnel. So to, you know, you've probably heard that term. Um, so you're basically offering them a freebie of some sort, something very compelling. Get my five tips, you know, five easy tips to you know, live a better life, whatever it is. And, and you want that to be as compelling as possible to get as many signups as possible because then you have multiple opportunities. Now they're on your mailing list. So you have multiple opportunities to, to get them to the next thing, right? And that could be through your funnel, through your nurturing program. It can be, we can talk about that. Um, if it's a podcast, um, you can still say on your podcast, hey, I want everybody who's listening in to get my free five tips thing. And that's a good thing to do. Um, but a podcast can also be kind of like a web a webinar, right? And webinars are generally sales tech tools, right? So you drive sometimes people use podcasts to drive people directly to the sale, right? So they'll direct them directly to the sales page. So you you have your sales page as part of the of the process, right? For an email database blast, you don't send them right to the sales page. You send them to your freebie, and then you eventually get them to your sales page. When you're on a podcast, you might send them straight to the sales page because they may be convinced about who you are and what they want just from the podcast interview. Let me ask you a question here. I want to take a respite. I know yeah. that there's several people here who also have their own podcast. So on, on their behalf, I want to ask, so let's say they're pitching. Got this podcast. It seems like they've got an engaged audience and they direct uh, people. And it's something germane to what they're talking about anyway. But let's say they don't see engagement. There's no clicks, maybe for a free gift here and there. So what does that mean? Yeah, that's um, not uncommon. Um, some podcasts have more engaged audiences than others. A lot of times it's because people are listening in their car 
or they're listening, you know, while they're working out or, you know, it's a, it's very much an audio only uh, often. Um, or sometimes they're listening. If you put your podcast on YouTube, they might be listening on YouTube. They're not necessarily in a place where they're engaging online, right? Clicking on things and checking them out. Um, that's just the nature of that, of that. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know that there's a, a lot you can do it to get around that other than to, um, to be memorable. <laughs> and I know, you know, Debbie teaches this. <laughs> so uh, this is important to be, to be memorable and, and have a, uh, an engaging offer. Um, and knowing the podcast ahead of time, like what works, what doesn't, you know, how much should you pitch or how little should you pitch based on you know, the podcaster, you should know that before you go into it. I know Debbie teaches this too. Um, get to know the podcast first. So, you know, you know, and if it turns out it's a podcast that doesn't like you to pitch that much, so it's not going to be like a webinar, then I'd say offer a freebie. Say, you know, hey, everybody is listening on, you know, because you're on, because you're listening right now, I've got a freebie for you. Just go to my website, www.myname.com slash gift and get my gift. Like that's easy to remember right um so that's your default position i guess you could say if you're not sure otherwise do that right um but if you know that you can pitch if you know that you can make it kind of like a webinar in a sense where you you give some information some good quality information but you also pitch a little bit of what you're doing you know how to go farther than that with you um then you could consider sending people directly to your sales page from the podcast in essence, it would be like a webinar. What the same thing you would do in a webinar, you would do on that podcast. If again, if the podcast is an appropriate place to do that. Yeah, and uh, Devin was just posting. Be sure to ask the host, and also, very good point. You can offer to them to become an affiliate. And I, I will tell you, as a 14-year radio person and podcaster, it's very rare a guest comes on and gives their website or gift and says, oh, and by the way, should I get a sale? So of course I always teach, you know, when you move the needle for somebody as a podcaster, if you're a guest, send them a thank you, right? At the very least, send them a Starbucks card um, where David here roasts his own coffee, <laughs> send them coffee. You know, like I've gotten, I'm looking at artwork that I've received, big geodes, that people have, you know, because something has happened on my show for them, I think it's really important to recognize someone has taken their well-nurtured audience for you and your book and all of that, it, at the very least, always send a thank you. And, and, and even, you know, be sure to promote the podcast that you're on. Uh, promote it to your, at least to your uh, social media so that everybody can see it. And if you have an email database, let them know, hey, I'm going to be on this podcast on Friday, you know, whatever, at time, this time, come, come see me. Um, the podcaster appreciates it. Your people will appreciate it. You're going to talk about something interesting. Um, it never hurts to do that. And, um, it, it does make a difference. Some, some podcasts require it or, or imply, you know, that it's kind of necessary. Um, I even went so far one time I got on a podcast, uh, through a friend of a friend. Um, I felt it was a good enough opportunity. I actually boosted the post that I put on my social media. I actually, in other words, I paid to boost the post and I paid, I paid Facebook, right. Uh, to get it out to more people. It only cost me like a hundred bucks, but you know, it was a big deal. It's a big deal to do that. It's a, it's a big extra step, right? So, um, it's something worth considering. You can, you can boost a post. The boosting is so simple. You can spend $20. And boost it just a little bit. I mean, it's very flexible that way. So um, something to consider. And most of us have Google alerts on our name. So trust me, when my guests do co-synergize, meaning that they also cross-promote the show, I do a lion share out there. If someone will meet me at least halfway and a little more, I see. I see exactly what's going on and what someone's doing. And we're more apt to invite them on again or promote them to someone else who has a great show or, you know, other things. So, and also, it, you know, it's good karma for both of us. We both win. Your audience meets mine. My audience meets yours. Ta-da. Um, I'm going to add one other little please. layer layer to that same question. Um, 
if you do send people to a sale, um, make it a compelling sale. <laughs> make it um, one of your lower priced items. You should hopefully you have low, medium, and high priced uh, items in your ecosystem. Um, and if you don't, hopefully you're working on that, right? So you have a little of all, all of it. And you wanna maybe start with your low priced items, depending on how low that is. Um, but a sale, a direct sale, direct to sale without people being in your mailing, on your mailing list, hearing from you regularly, you can drive people to, to higher price ticket items on that because they're they're on your mailing list. They're part of your community. They're listening to you all the time. You can you can gradually build them up to higher ticket items. But if you're just on somebody's podcast and you decide you're going to go direct to a sale, pick the lower priced items first and let people build up from there. Um, much more likely people will purchase something uh, easier to pay for <laughs> than than not. Um, there are some exceptions. There's always exceptions, but that's a good general rule. And you mentioned earlier nurturing program. I've never heard those words. What does that mean? Uh, it's just your nurturing campaign, basically. Um, when I say that, I mean emails that you send out live, meaning they're not pre-created and set up in an autoresponder. Um, they're, nur they're nurturing emails that you send out twice a month or once a week to uh, keep people interested in what you do and, and share knowledge with people. Um, there's a, you know, there's an art to that. <laughs> there's an art to those nurturing emails and they are there to nurture your audience. So they stay in and stay interested uh, so that when you do have something to sell, you know, down the road, they're, they're in, you know, they want to hear about it, you know, and you can announce it like, Hey, I, I, I'm so happy to announce my new book or my new course. And they'll listen to you because you've been nurturing them all this time. So, and I call those live because you're, you're not writing them ahead of time and then putting them in an autoresponder, which, which is fine to do, but, but not those nurturing emails. Those are your regular emails that you write, uh, you know, every, every week or a couple of weeks. Okay. Interesting. You know, you talk, Chris, about the importance of starting to see our own brand as an ecosystem of interacting components. Can you give an example of what that means? Yeah, I do. I talk about it in terms of ecosystem all the time, um, especially to book authors, right? Because um, book authors, uh, you know, 50, 60% of the ones I talk to really already have an ecosystem. So it's good to think of what you're doing as an ecosystem. And then the other 30 to 40% um, aren't thinking of it that way and should, should be. And what that means is, you know, it's not just about the book. It's about all the things you do in and around that book that is the ecosystem of your unique value proposition. And so if your unique value proposition is, you know, I teach, you know, struggling entrepreneurs, you know, how to get over stress <laughs> in my unique way. Okay. So you have a book on that, but you might also have a course or you might also have a mastermind group that's live, or you might also have a, a little low price, you know, mini course. You might, so there's all these different components of an ecosystem. And I could go through and list some of the things that might be in an ecosystem, but I wouldn't want you to think you have to have all of these necessarily. You'd want to pick the right ones for various reasons. One reason is what do you, what turns you on? What do you want to do? You know, um, another reason is what is your goal? What are you trying to accomplish? And what is the campaign you're using to get there? Um, I'll give you one example. Uh, there's a, there's an item called a tripwire product, which is a very low priced product, right? It's almost like a freebie, but you charge a little for it, right? So something you might have used as a freebie, you could use as a tripwire and you charge like $4.99 for it or $3, you know, or you know, under $14, right? So it's a it's an impulse buy kind of thing. And you may or may not want a, a tripwire. It depends on your funnel. It depends on what you're doing, right? It's, it's not necessarily part of your ecosystem. But if your funnel, you know, lends itself to having one, then you, then you want one. You want to identify it. You want to price it and have people buy it. Here's one reason why you might want one. If you're using Facebook ads or any ads, uh, most people use Facebook and Instagram ads to drive traffic. Um, a lot of people use it, this low-priced, you know, $7 $4 product 
to pay for the ads. They basically are just trying to break even off of the Tripwire product. If they can just get people to you know, sign up for their freebie and then buy the little $4 product you know, at, at enough of a clip that they basically pay, cover the cost of the ads, then they're basically getting people into their mailing list for free because it's covering the cost of the ads. That's a genius uh, strategy if you can make that work. If you can, if you're Tripwire, you can get the Tripwire to pay for the cost of the ads. It's a great strategy to try for. Um, and that's a good reason to have a Tripwire product in your in your system. We did this uh, for Bill Gladstone, who was uh, you know with you a few weeks ago. We did this with his product. He's got a publishing program. Uh, it's like one hundred twenty nine dollars, but we did a little Tripwire, which is a, the book blueprint, and it was fourteen dollars. We got a very and for the ads, we got actually got a very high uptake on the book blueprint, and we were like pretty excited. Like this is looking good. Turned out none of the book blueprint buyers went on to buy the product. Mm. They just stopped at the book blueprint. Wow. So we we learned something from that, right? So mm. we had success with the with the tripwire, but it didn't lead to what we really wanted, which was we we really just wanted that to pay for the ad so that and then some of those people would go on to purchase. We found that that wasn't happening. So we we retooled it. We, you know, we learned from it and we, we changed it. So that's inevitable. <laughs> yeah, that's a great example. In, very interesting and, and <laughs> makes you feel very humble when you know even, even someone like Bill Gladstone, right? Dot, dot, dot. This can happen to. Um, and, and part of the reason I think is that the book bl blueprint was so good mm. in a way that people didn't really need more. They didn't, ah. they didn't feel like they needed to get the full product. Like that book blueprint is keeping me pretty busy. Like it's a pretty cool thing. So I think we overdid it. We over delivered in a way. Yes. And that's, that's something you want to be careful not to do in your freebies or your tripwires. Beautiful. Yes. I've on occasion had a book client or a bestseller book client come to me and they're like, I have this 400 to 600 page book and, you know, they're giving everything away. And it's like, darling, you could actually with great ease split that into a two book series or three book series. And we can meter this out to great success on your behalf. And then it's very digestible. No one let, well, I won't speak for everybody. I'll speak for myself. I don't like to go to a meal and stuff myself. I feel terrible. The whole experience wasn't good. But if I eat just enough that I was savoring and enjoying and ingesting, it's beautiful, right? And I think it's the same way with information, whether we're teaching a webinar, a class, writing a book, being interviewed, you cannot give everything away. People don't have the capacity. But if you give just so much, it actually causes us to be very engaged with you and desirous of more. Yeah, agreed. It's the, probably the number one mistake that I see authors making is they over deliver on certain things. Yeah, yeah. which is hard, right? Because yeah. you think I'm writing a great book and you're like, blah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that's where a coach comes in. Um, so I want to talk about for people who, uh, most of the people here have written a book, some of them are on their way, almost publishing, da, 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 but, but these are all book people. And I want to talk about, because times have changed, right? After everything we've just all been through in the last fascinating year, I know I have seen the book industry change. I've seen the amount of authors popping up. Everyone went, it's time to write a book. It's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So also I feel marketing has changed because we're so inundated. What are the best strategies you know about, Chris, for people to really get a run for their money, meaning that what they implement really works? Obviously, they could hire, I just want to say this so it's clear, they could hire someone like me. I do the bestseller book launch. However, I also feel like it's powerful. I'll, I'm going to do what I guarantee I do. That's that. But if, but if an author takes initiative super fun and a lot can be created. Then there are those maybe who don't want to hire myself to do it and they want to do it on their own. So you take it from here because I know you're an author too. What really yeah. works? Um, a lot of things can work. One of the, the uh, uh, a couple things that are sort of ubiquitous or you know given you, you, you need to do is you, you need to have a freebie, at least one that is very compelling. 
so that you can drive people to that to get into your mailing list. And don't, don't offer a newsletter. Nobody wants to sign up for somebody's newsletter. Don't give them a sample chapter from your book. Those never work. Design a freebie to be a freebie, to stand alone, to give one little nugget of value that's really like an aha, like, wow, that was great. This is the response you want from people. Wow, that was great. What else does she have? What else does he have? That's the ideal response from your freebie. You, you've got to have at least one of those. And you might have a couple of them, depending on the types of audiences and the types of things you want to do. Um, and we can get into the kinds of freebies if you want to, uh, but you need to have them. And, and you're going to be driving people to that as often as you can, because that gets people on your mailing list. Then you nurture them, right? Then you're going to have your nurturing campaign. So getting people onto your mailing list, number one. Um, and having the ecosystem that you then drive people to. Now, you don't have to have the whole ecosystem all set and ready, you know, a, as is the norm for an ecosystem. It's always in flow, right? You might take something out and put something new in. That's fine. That's good. But you know you're, you're having an ecosystem approach to it. Now, how do you move the needle? Now that you, you've got your great stuff, you've got your freebie, how do you really move the needle? And it, it comes down to traffic, really, you know, um, and there's different kinds of traffic. And we've already talked about how email traffic does tend to be some of the best. And, e and within email traffic, the joint venture approach is something we focus on a lot in at the Author Co-op, which Debbie mentioned. It's a list building uh, platform for not just for authors, but all experts and speakers and you know the experts industry. Um, and and what we want to do there is. Um, What's, in, what's important is that we're uh, doing JVs, joint, joint ventures. How many, you already know what joint ventures are? Do you, should I cover that? I do, um, but I, of course, um, I would say, yes, please do. I'll, I'll cover it briefly. So a, a joint venture, so you all probably know what an affiliate relationship is. You've got a product, they've got an audience, they promote your product to their audience. You pay them a commission for all the sales that they drive. That's a one one way street. Your product goes out to them. They put it out to their audience. One direction. A joint venture is the exact same thing in two directions. You've got a product. They've got an audience. They've got a product. You've got an audience, and you exchange. It's a it's a trade, right? I'll promote you. You promote me. And now, naturally, so well, I'll start with the benefits of that. The reason why that's so powerful and that we, we um, emphasize it quite a bit, it's not the only thing we do, but the re reason we emphasize it a bit is because it has some of the highest quality traffic. And this is about moving the needle and getting people farther down, you know, your, your, farther into your ecosystem to actually make purchases and things like that. And that's because if somebody has an audience, their audience trusts them. That's their email audience. So if they say, hey, I, I just, you know, talk to my friend, you know, so-and-so, and you really should go check out her book or you should go check out her freebie. Uh, it's really great. Now their audience is gonna trust that, right? So you're getting a very warm audience and you're gonna get a higher conversion rate, better quality. Okay, so it's high quality traffic. The other benefit of JVing is um, it's cheap. You don't have to pay anything. <laughs> All you have to have is an audience. You have to have an audience to return the favor, right? You have to trade. So you need that audience. You need to build your audience to, to be able to do those JVs, right? And then you do the same for your audience. Now, the challenges of joint venturing is because it's an exchange, you have to find partners that are willing to do it and you have to both like each other's stuff, right? You have to kind of approve each other. And sometimes people don't want to do that, right? It, it's a challenge. The, the biggest challenge is the partner part of it. Finding the partner that likes what you do and you like what they do, so you're both okay with promoting each other, not too competitive, but relative to your audience. Your audience will like it, what they do, and their audience will like what you do. And last point, also most important, their audience and your audience are approximately the same size. Because if, if, if you go to a partner and say, let's do a JV, I think my audience would like what you're doing. And they say, yeah, I think what you have is good for my audience. The first question they're gonna ask is, how big is your list? You go, well, I've got 3000 people in my list. And they go, yeah, come back later. We have 30,000. It's not gonna happen, right? 
So that's another obstacle is finding the right match, right? And there's different tricks and things you can do. You can sometimes promote two or three times for them if they're bigger than you and they promote once back for you, you go first and, and gather it up so they are sure you've, you've matched to them and then they, re, then they resend back to you afterward. Um, that sometimes makes it happen if, uh, if it's a mismatch on size. Um, sometimes you can bring in a partner. One of the things we do at the Author Co-op is we use our list on behalf of our members. So, so our 250,000 can be used to back up any of our members. So, J, so we basically facilitate JVs happen to, to happen. Um, that's a unique thing. Not everybody, you know, does that or has that. Um, but we believe in the JV uh, way of driving traffic because of that. Because it's so warm. It's such good traffic if you can, you know, make it happen. Um, now there are other types of traffic besides that. Um, you know, there's paid paid media traffic. So when you go out to advertising, there's uh, social traffic podcasting, you know, all of that kind of thing. Um, what you choose is going to be sort of a, a, you know, like an EQ setting <laughs> on your music, you know, a little more of this, a little less of this. If you have no, if you have no budget to spend on advertising, then that's going to be low, right? You're not going to do a lot of that. You're going to do more of the stuff that's cheaper. If you have budget, then you can put some money into Facebook ads and make that work, you know, and experiment with that. Um, so it really does depend on your personal situation and where you're going, where, where you're trying to get to. This is why I was harping earlier on, it's not a one size fits all equation. There's so many reasons why it, it's custom to, to your situation. Obviously there are groupings. Pe people do tend to fit into certain groups, uh, but, but it's not always all, all the same. Mm. Did I answer that okay? <laughs> yes. Um, so well, I, I'm sort of grappling with, to add something, you were saying it's not a one size fits all. And as we know, technology always changes. I just want to add this, that I was recently invited to something that was a really unique proposition from a company. I'll read enough to know energetically, yes, no, follow through, okay, I'll do a Zoom or a quick call with you. But this guy started pitching and I'm like, I'm freaking in. It's so fascinating. And I don't know how it's going to end up, but they created something called an info stack. So for instance, the one that they're having me participate in in June, my goodness, there must be at least 50 people who are donating something around book writing. Now, my product is so expensive, it's stupid, but I energetically got a yes. And I'm like, here you go, 849 bucks, da, da, da. But it's not just my product for 49, it's like all 50. Right. So every, you know, some people are doing an ebook, some people are doing this, I'm giving away a whole entire course. Like, I just think it's fascinating, right? But here's the rub about doing this info stack, which really sort of ups the pressure. It's not just I sit back and wah ha ha, I get affiliate money. Actually, I only get per what I sell. So even though my product may be sold by other people, they're still going to get the benefit. So it really, in a very good, interesting way, puts the pressure on you. Like you can't, you know, you're not sitting back and smoking your cigar and seeing, eh, you know, if you sell my stuff, I still work out. The big question on that though, and I, I, I think I know what the answer is gonna be is, are you getting the email addresses? Uh, right, exactly. And I think and the yes. answer is probably, probably no, the people who purchase or- um, you know, actually, I appreciate you asking that because I was thinking, well, since my product, one of these products is on Thinkific, I know that I'll be following what's going on. So that's a good question. Um, but I can certainly follow up and ask them. Very yeah, important, those, actually. because Those sort of product-based, uh, group product-based things uh, tend to not give you the email addresses. They're, they're good for certain things. They're good for getting your brand out there. And also you can, you can use products that you, that maybe are a little older that you're not featuring anymore. And you can say, hey, this is really worth, you know, when I, when I had this, you know, three years ago, it was $295. I'm going to give it to you for $49. It's a really great deal. And I'm not really promoting it right now. So what the heck, right? It's great for that, right? And you will get, you will get customers. Um, the downside is you usually don't get the email addresses. Um, and you're in there with a lot of other people. Um, there's a similar group uh, thing that we do and other people do as well that, uh, 
you could just call it the group gift page where you have 10 or 12 gifts on one page and all the contributors, all the people who contribute those gifts, uh, sort of like with your product, but in this case, it would be freebies. So everybody puts in a freebie onto this one page and the host of the page puts it up and you know promotes it. And then everybody who puts it in also promotes it, right? And it's actually a kind of a requirement. You have to promote to a certain level to be, to be on that page. And then everybody gets the email addresses, but only of the ones that opt into your own thing, right? That's a, that's a similar thing that you described, uh, but with freebies. That's great. Okay, yeah. so I, I have a few more questions. We are gonna open it up to you guys very soon. So if you have things that you're you know, burning, just write it down. You'll definitely get a chance to contact and speak directly to Chris and get them answered. Um, so many questions, let me see. Okay, before I go there, I wanna make sure Chris, um, and we'll say it again at the end, but Chris, of course, is going to offer you to work with him in the author's co-op. Will you speak some to what people get ah, yeah. in their list building? Sure, absolutely. Um, it is a list build, it is primarily a list building uh, platform. It is to help uh, what we call mid-list authors and experts uh, build. And mid-list means you're still building your platform. You're not an A-lister yet. <laughs> that's all that. That's all that means. Um, which is most most of us, right? <laughs> um, and so, um, if you have, uh, we I would say if you have thirty thousand in your mailing list or more, you don't need to be in the author call. So, if if any of you listening in have thirty thousand or more on your mailing list, you probably don't need to be in the author co-op. We have other things that we do uh, for that. Uh, but if you're still trying to build up to that number, um, the author crop basically uh, fast tracks it. So we we bring in, we help you build your best freebie, right? We work with you on that. Uh, and I have a little process, a little four-step process to sort of measure whether your freebie is going to work. It's going to going to do what you want it to do. It's going to go where you want it to go. Mm. Um, and then uh, you you usually create the freebie. It may be something you already have. It may be something new. We we decide that together. And then you give it to us. We put it up online on our on our platform and we put the page up and then we promote it to our audience to our audience right which is that uh, anywhere from about 150,000 to 250,000 depending on what the freebie is and what the audience is um because we have segments of you know different segments right um so then so then we sort of kickstart it right so you'll get you'll get people into your mailing list just from our internal mailing and then from that point on and this is probably the greatest benefit of it, really. Um, you can bring in your JV partners, your partners who would who want to promote your stuff, but you don't have enough of a mailing list to promote them back. Well, you can bring them to us and we'll promote them back for you. So we use our list on your behalf. And the only requirement is that that partner promotes the freebie that we have for you, right? Um, the one that we built together and put up on our platform. So they promote that freebie and then we promote them back on your behalf. They could be up to 200,000 mailing list and you get all that traffic to your freebie. It's a really powerful option. The thing is, you have to find those partners, right? We're not going out and getting partners for you. These are for your partners that you find. Now we, we give you tips and best practices on how to find those, uh, but you you make those connections. And obviously we the first tip is start with the people you already know <laughs> who are influencers in your area. Start with them and, and see if they'll promote for you. And if you let them know that they will be promoted in return from your marketing partner that backs you up with 250,000 in their mailing list, that'll open up some doors. That'll you know open up their ears. Like, oh, I can get promoted too. What do you got? <laughs> you know, people will listen more, right? And um, and then you bring them in to us. We have a little meeting. My JV manager uh, meets with them, sets it up, and we make that happen. You get that traffic. Um, you can do that as much as you want once you're a member. You can do that as much as you want. There's no extra cost for doing those. Um, we have about, I'd say about, what what generally happens is, you know, 70 to 80% of our members do do at least a couple of those. And then it starts to taper off. They, they kind of get in touch with everybody they know. And, and then I say, you know, here's how to reach out to people you don't yet know, but you know of, and here's how to reach out to them. And some of them do that and some of them don't. 
right? That's where it gets, you know, that's where it's like work. You have to, you have to go find the connections and make those influencer connections. The more of the people who do that, the faster they build their list. Yeah, that seems to me that that's where the gold is. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and then we also, you know, we have our own media uh, components that we use, that we do. We have, um, we have our group gift pages, like I described just a minute ago. We have our own that we use just for our members. Uh, so it's sort of a very in internal group, uh, which actually is a good thing. It gets around certain of the drawbacks of those uh, group gift pages when when it's just anybody. They're, you know, The host of the gift page is putting together anybody who has a freebie. Sometimes you kind of wonder like, do I really want to be on the same page as some of those guys? Um, you know, they're not that great quality. Sometimes you, you're not sure, right? Whereas our group gift pages, it's always members of the co-op, the author co-op. And so you know that we're handling their gift pages. So you know, it's going to work. <laughs> you know, they're all good quality. Um, so that's one. We do those. We do um, multi-author events. We do, we have a couple of um, summits that we do. We have a couple of uh, e-zines, magazines that um, we uh, invite our members to contribute to, and those go out. So we have all these other different things that we do to, to promote too. So you're offering a lot of significant visibility, list building. I love that this is um, exponential. It's not just this one path, but you really cover a lot of territory that's important. And if I understand correctly, the people who are purchasing your program today, I'll give out that URL. It's launchmoxie, launchmoxie.com slash viz, like visibility visionaries, V-I-V, V-I-S, <laughs> launchmoxie.com slash viz. They are also, you're throwing in as a bonus, a free coaching session with you. Is that a private coaching session? Yeah, it's a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, extra one-on-one. -on -one you get one uh, with me uh, when you join and uh, you get an extra, you'll, uh, I'm going to throw in an extra one. That's yeah. so right yeah. there. <laughs> That's a unique proposition right there. That's worth the, worth every everything um yeah okay fantastic and you let's see um i have so many notes from everything you said compelling sale freebies um, <laughs> <laughs> success story i think i want to hear a success story uh launch Mo launch moxie authors co-op success story tell us somebody who is really not doing so well and what potentially happened? Oh, wow. Um, I, I'll have a couple. Um, the first one that comes to mind is uh, one of our clients that's been with us for many, many years. He came to uh, Mark Waldman. He's a fairly well, well respected um, neuroscience researcher. He's done several books. Um, he was a professor uh, at LMU. For a long time and um, he came to us without much of a mailing list without much of an infrastructure uh five six years ago um probably about three thousand in his mailing list he now has fifty thousand in his mailing list and he drives i mean that is a very loyal list i mean they love what he does when he he moves the needle anytime he promotes anything um and uh, i mean it's just great it performs as well as a list of a hundred thousand uh you know uh, from a general general list. Um, and so it's really great to see that success and we've helped him build his pages and we, we handle all of his freebies. Um, we also, in his case, we also help him build those pages and his, and his website and his, we, we uh, help him with his e-commerce and all that stuff too. Um, and he's built many programs now, uh, uh, online courses. And uh, he now has several. He started off with just one when we met him. Um, and he's got numerous freebies. We've, we've built special funnels now to drive into those programs. Um, and he's got a very thriving now, a very thriving uh, neuro coach training program uh, to, for coaches to learn neuro coaching, right? Um, so uh, he's a great success story. I love, I love that one. He's still yeah, with us. you quickly. I know Mark very well, and that's awesome to hear. When somebody comes to you and has a freebie, 
do, do they do all the creating, the author person does all the creating on there and then they just turn it over to you and you make something fabulous happen online with it or how does that work? Quite often, uh, depends on the freebie, but nine times out of 10, yes. Um, although we decide what the freebie will be and the approach of the freebie together. And then, and like I say, sometimes it's something you already have that maybe you just tweak it a little bit. Other times, maybe it's something you have to start, you know, create from scratch or pull things together from, you know, that doesn't yet exist. Uh, we decide on that together, right? Um, and then you, the author, creates it, right? And, and then, yes, we put it together from that point on. Now, if it's an ebook, and we use, we do a lot of ebooks, little, little what we call mini ebooks, um, like 20 pages, 22 pages maximum is, is very common. Um, we don't necessarily produce the ebook. Um, we can, and we sometimes do if you want us to, uh, but a lot of times the author will have a designer of their own or you know, somebody that does that for them and they'll give us a finished e you know, PDF ebook. Uh, other times they'll say, well, can you, can you actually produce it for me? And we charge a little extra for that, but we do that too. Um, and then we'll put that up online. So uh, it kind of depends on the freebie. If it, uh, again, like if it's a course, like a little mini course, two or three little short videos on a course, nine times out of 10, the author does those themselves and uh, they just send us the videos and we do the rest. Oh, wow. Okay, excellent. And freebies, you were mentioning earlier, there's some freebies that are much better than others. Which ones do you recommend that generally get the conversion? Well, uh, more than one answer to that. Uh, <laughs> As I keep saying in this, uh, it's <laughs> good. We have so many different people from different backgrounds here, so it's perfect. Yeah, something well, for everyone. I can tell you some general ideas here. So, um, uh, uh, the ebook downloads, little mini ebook downloads, are very popular. People love to get them. People love to collect them. Uh, people do. Uh, they are very compelling if they have a compelling title. Um, and, and there should be a compelling title. And we, we work with you to make sure it is compelling. Um, and people love them. Um, the downside is uh, sometimes they download them and then don't read them. Right. Right. So you have that problem. Uh, but the person got into your mailing list by downloading it. So you at least you can email them. Right. Um, then there's the quiz, right. The, or the self-assessment, you know, which type of you know, X, Y, Z, are you, you know, which, you know, like the Harry Potter people did, did which, which of the four houses, you know, they're, uh, uh, I forget what they called, you know, um, which, if you were in the, in the school, the, the Hogwarts school, which of the four houses would you be in? And, and that's a ex perfect example of the kind of quiz that you want to do, you know, putting people into four or five or six categories. People love those. They want to know about themselves. They want to know, well, which one would I be? You know, it's, it's very compelling, maybe the most compelling. And you get the most opt-ins for that. Um, it's, but they're hard. They're more work, a lot more work. Yep. And you make sure you have to do it right. Because if you, if you give people the impression you're leading them on to something, they'll quit the quiz in the middle. So you, and you won't get the email address. So you have to be very careful you're doing it well. Uh, but they are maybe one of the most compelling. Um, little mini courses are good. Uh, they should be mini because one of the downsides of doing a mini course is you can easily over deliver and you want to make sure you don't over deliver. So, um, you know, two seven minute videos or three seven minute videos, somewhere in that neighborhood, uh, delivering, you know, one little nugget in each video. That's it, right? Um, those are compelling though. People like those. They can just re, you know, just go through the videos real quickly and get the, get the information, right? Um, there's things like an email drip. This is, these are very common. We do a lot of email drips where it's like five tips over five days or seven steps to something. If you can put things in separate emails in a daily uh, email, uh, then that's a good option. It's, they're easy to do, they're short, they're compelling, and you're emailing people over and over, so they get used to opening your emails and looking at you every day for seven days. And so your, your picture is there, your logo is there. So they it's a great ongoing reminder. And they sign up for a seven day process. So they know they're getting seven days of stuff you know, or five days or whatever it is. Um, 
So we do a lot of those drips, uh, email drips. So those are just a few. Um, they're all good options. Um, it comes down to you know what the best content is for your purpose, um, and you know what turns you on. This is amazing. I'm taking notes because I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting ideas too. I have so much of what you talk about, but I. I've never done a quiz and I love them too. And I am also so guilty of what you say. Someone has a book and in the moment it's like, oh, okay, that sounds awesome. And I'll go on. I'm like zero capacity, like, thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I want to say it is kind of genius. It gets you in. And I really want to iterate for my students here who are working on their book, a 20 page ebook like Chris is talking about is not your book right? And y'all just did an anthology together. You did 35 pages. So it's even shorter. And you don't even have to, for those who are like, don't want to deal, want to hire, beautiful, hire. You could go to Canva and for free or paid subscription, which I have, you can create a beautiful ebook, a 20 page ebook there, um, sized cover, the whole deal. So this kind of stuff is not that hard when you're just doing something that is an offer to get people aboard. And just don't use a sample chapter. And um, yeah, real beginning, middle and end. Yes. Think of it as a, as a little independent little book. One of the things I, uh, I encourage people to do when, when authors come to the and say, can I do a sample chapter? I say, no, but you, what you can do is a highlights ebook, pull highlights from your book. So a little paragraph here, a little paragraph there, just all throughout the book and compile it into the highlights mini book. Now, that's not always the best for everybody, but that's something you could consider is a, is a little highlights book. Otherwise, another strategy is to do like the missing chapter from your book mm. or chapter zero. You know, this is the one that didn't get into the book. And so you, of course, you design it to be its own little independent book, but you call it, you know, the missing chapter. I love um, that. That's a cool strategy. Uh, sometimes it's a workbook. Uh, exercise book that can stand alone, but also goes with the book, if you, you know? So there's a lot of strategies for using ebooks, little mini ebooks. Okay. So as promised, we are gonna open this up to folks. And um, I know that Devin had a question and um, rather than read it, Devin, if you don't mind, uh, go ahead and make yourself seen. Is uh, not camera ready today. Hi, I am Devin's higher pitched female half Morgana. <laughs> but I'm here too. Yes. So I wanted clarification. So because this is super attractive to me, I, ha I am the freebie queen, mm -hmm. quizzes, courses, downloads, and they lead to sales. So if I do, if I send my friends with a hundred thousand person list, do I get all of their opt-ins? Uh, and, and is the free, okay, I'm seeing a positive head nod. Uh, and is my freebie on its own page or is it on a list of freebies? Both. Um, so first, yes, you get all the opt-ins that go into your freebie. Absolutely, that's your list. Um, and then the second part is, um, each freebie has its own page and we drive traffic to that page, but we also put them on group pages and we have several things. In fact, you could just go to launchmoxie.com, the homepage, launchmoxie.com, and you'll see a bunch of freebies there in different categories. You just click on some and look at them. Um, and uh, you know, if you wanna opt into a few and see some of the eBooks or things like that, you're, you're welcome to, of course. Um, but you can see the pages, right? You can see how we, we format the pages and, um, and then up in the upper right corner on the, in the menu system of, of that uh, homepage, uh, you'll see our, some of our category, what we call our category pages, which is basically groups you know, in categories. So we have a money, uh, money category. So all of the different freebies that, that are sort of money and success and, and finance oriented are on, those, on that page. And then we have one for health. And, um, so we do both. Very cool. Follow up. Question? I already forgot the question. Oh, no more follow-up question. Thank you. You're welcome. Beautiful. And if you remember later, you can always chime in. Um, I also want to say when y'all ask a question, please just 
one liner. This is what I do. That's all I want. I don't want to pitch. But the reason is, I, I just looking around, we have somebody here who wrote an, an amazing book on grief and is also a dancer and an actress. We have healers here. We have someone here who is a very successful musician. We have somebody here who is a very successful composer and also um, does mindfulness meditation for cancer people. We have someone here who is a love relationship coach who also co-does the meditation. We've got love people, travel people, da da da. So please, we're all mindful folks, but it might help Chris to maybe have a great idea for you and what you do in your realm. So let's use this time wisely. We're all going to learn from each other. And who else has a burning question or a hot question or a or sizzling. even a cold question. <laughs> <laughs> or a cooling I'm down never, question. I'm my follow-up question, if that's okay. Devin, hi. Uh, what kind of results? I mean, do you have sort of like a, a, gen, a general number finger a figure? If somebody starts off with, let's say, uh, a list of, say, 3,000, uh, is, you know, getting 10,000, is that unrealistic? What is sort of a, a realistic expectation? And thank you in advance. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, we uh, I give a little bit of an expectation on our in-house uh, promotion, which is a, guarantee, a guaranteed promotion. Um, we generally get at least a thousand clicks uh, uh, to the offer, which usually results in at least 500 opt-ins. So we get it, we get at least a 50% opt-in rate, usually better. Um, we don't like to see an opt-in rate of lower than 40%. Uh, then we we look at it again and maybe redo it if it's if it's getting lower than forty percent. So um, sometimes we get much more than that. Uh, sometimes we get a little less than that. And we promote it again, but uh, we generally try to hit a, a at least a minimum of a thousand clicks, five hundred opt-ins from our promotion, our internal promotion. Um, then how? how fast and how far the rest of it goes really depends on you, right? Depends on how many of those JVs you bring in. How active is that? We've had, we've actually had people who go out and hire a JV manager to go out and get the JV partners to bring into the co-op because they're co-op members. And they do like, a, we had one that did a campaign for like three months. She brought in, I don't know, 20 or 30 of these that we did with her. Great. We're happy to have that. We don't mind that at all. She actually, you know, hired a, a, a JV manager to go get the JV partners for her. She got several thousand, you know, thousands of uh, opt-ins, you know, during that period. Now, not everybody's going to go that far, um, but but how many of those you do does influence how fast and how far it goes. Follow-up question. So you, the thousand comes from mailing out to 250,000 people? No, generally it's to a segment. We'll, we're going to mail to the best segments that match what you do. Um, real quick, our, our segments are, uh, we have a uh, mindfulness and meditation segment. We have a soul and spirit segment, which we call it, which you could call the woo-woo segment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's astrology, numerology, that kind of stuff. Um, very, very responsive segment. We have a business segment that is sort of B2B. Um, which is which includes people like you, authors, experts. We have uh, what else am I forgetting? We have a, a neuroscience a segment. Um, we have so we have various segments, and we'll usually promote this to two or three, depending on how they fit, right? Um, so yeah, it's not you. Will, very unlikely you would just go out to one segment, but uh, but it's also less likely you you go out to all of them. Uh, we want to pick the segments that fit what you're doing. Um, and so we just say a thousand is, you know, what, what we strive for. And if it goes a lot below a thousand, we, uh, we keep promoting until, until we get that. I have a quick question for you, Chris, and then we'll go to Karen. Um, I'm hearkening back to what you asked me earlier, niggling now about, are they giving me the email list? And like, I certainly get the, the import of that. So let's say I go back to these people and say, hey, cool, I'm going to be doing this info stack. And they say, no, what, what is your recommendation? What, do you think it's worthwhile to participate? I'm good with an honest answer. 
if it's a product that, um, like I said, is a you know something from the past that you're not really using it much anymore, and it's just kind of you know found money uh, that you could earn, um, I'd say go ahead. Uh, other otherwise, I'd say those kinds of those kinds of group deals generally benefit the host more than the participants. Got it. Because they're getting all the, they're getting all of the opt-ins, right? Um, you're lucky if you get just the ones for yours, right? Um, and, and maybe you don't even get that. Uh, you, you might, you can ask them. But um, so, I mean, you just have to look at it. It's, it doesn't mean automatically that it's a bad thing. Uh, um, I know a lot of people who have built lists off of uh, free uh, group gift pages um, and they make it work. And so uh, I'm not saying don't do them. Uh, just saying, you know, look look at it, see, see if you can finagle in a little extra benefit. Hey, can you give me the list? Well, if I promote it beyond X amount, will you give me the list? You know, mm. th things like that. Um, you know, so, so sometimes they have a minimum promotion requirement, things like that. Negotiating. Love it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you. And um, Karen, I know you had a question. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay. Thank you for being here. I really enjoyed this talk so much so and also because it's just confirming a lot of the things that I knew and then other things bringing in so I really appreciate your presence here um, so there's a few of us on here and there may be even more that that I'm unaware of who were part of an anthology book and we just published in April and uh, late April and so how what would be your advice on how to you know, as there's four authors, there's five with Debbie in there. And um, how do you, how would you advise to promote something like this? Yes, us cool people. Um, I've seen different models. The primary purpose of a group book like that is prestige. Um, mm -hmm. It's not really to drive traffic per se, although I've seen models that do that do do that, uh, but the, probably the number one reason to be in one of those is is for prestige purposes. It's to have been published alongside some of these other names that are in the book, right? and the book hopefully gets out there because the host that's creating this book and and all the other authors that are part of it are are joining together to try to catapult this into the bestseller list of some sort, so that you can say, I've been in a book that's a bestseller co-authored with so-and-so. That's the main purpose for it. So even if it doesn't drive any traffic, if it does that for you, that's good. And, and that's the reason to be there. Now I've seen models where they allow the authors to pull out their chapter and use it uh, independently as a freebie. Uh, now you'd have to get permission from the host of that. Uh, but I, I know some uh, hosts that do those books that do allow that. And then you could use your the work that you put into that chapter, uh, you know, as your own freebie. So that's, you know, you can you can get a little extra mileage from it, right? Um, sometimes they let you even um, give away the book after a certain period of time. They'll allow the authors of the book, the co-authors of the book, to um, to give the ebook version away as a freebie. So you can use it for yourself for your freebie. So those are some of the things that I've seen. Uh, you'd have to coordinate this with the with the host, but um, it's possible. Did that answer your question, Lupe? Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, okay. no, thank you. I appreciate that. Sure. And Chris, um, will you reiterate the author's co-op program where they sign on to work with you? That's at launchmoxie.com slash VIS. Yep. They're getting the free well, two free private sessions. That for me is like, I'm already, hmm. <laughs> I get two free private sessions with you. Mm -hmm. I know that's a game changer. And and just reiterate, what else do they get for the list building? They get the uh, they get their freebie online, right? Uh, and the and the consultations to, to build that freebie. Uh, that's the that's the first of the two consultations. And then you get an you'll get an extra one. But the first one is usually spent. Uh, making sure your freebie is going to be the, the exact right thing for you. And then um, we put that online and we promote to it. Okay, so that's the basic everybody gets. And then you get the ability to bring in your, your JV partners. You, you don't have to do that at all. 
once in a while, we have a member that doesn't do that at all, but m most of our members will at least do a few of those. And we really encourage it because like you said, Debbie, that's the gold, really. That's, that's where you're really getting value. And it, there's no extra cost for doing that. You can do as many of those as you want. You know, we just schedule them, and make it happen. So, mm. and that's the package. That's what you get. And 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 then, I mean, the truth is, you do get other things. We we put we invite our members to be in our our media. You know, like our e-zines and our summits and our things that we do. Yeah, um, so you'll get that kind of exposure as well throughout the year. You know, um, and year after year. You also get a little benefits of uh, if you wanted to do a second promotion, if you want us to promote again to our list, um, you'll get a special discount on that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, our members get discounts on other stuff, uh, but you know, those are optional, of course. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm the same. Once once you're in, once you're in my tribe, I make it. Yeah, make it all work. So that's great. You really build a community, is what I'm hearing. I know you've been doing this a really long time. Um, Anybody, Robert, David, have a question? Dolores, no? I must have oh. explained everything. <laughs> Art, Barbara. I'm happy to jump in again. This is Morgana. Hey. But I will wait to make sure everybody else is answered. So I'll hang out here. This is your opportunity, folks. Um, if you have uh, some I, something, I hear someone. Is that Art? Yay. Yeah. yeah. So um, when we bring potential JVs in, <clears throat> do we like email you and go, hey, I want to bring this JV in, and then what's the next steps, or how does it work? We have a little uh, members guide that's like a, a little ebook that oh, ex mm -hmm. that explains it all. Um, but essentially, yeah, you, you don't email me, you email DB, who is our, our, our manager. Yeah. Uh, and she'll basically, basically the steps are you, you start the, you start the conversation with this partner. Um, you get them to at least express some interest, right? And, um, you can just say, okay, the very next step is to meet with me and launch Moxie people, and we'll all talk about it. Or you can go one more step first and, and get an idea of what they want to do and show them what you've got. And then do a meeting with us. So if I'm understanding one good way to do it is we, we don't say have to get a commitment from them, just interest. Then we have That's the it. meeting That's and right. you guys will be more impressive about it than I will. Yeah. So. We'll, we'll know all the right answers and the right questions and all that. And you know, some, sometimes your JV partner is going to be very experienced with JV and they know exactly what to ask and, yeah. and all that. And sometimes they don't know much about it at all. And I'm yeah. and our meet, on, on the meeting, we're actually teaching them a little bit about it. And that's okay too. It happens. Oh, that, that's great. That's really great. I know I have a question, Morgana. Why don't you jump in there? Uh, this is related to art because I would need to know this before I approach to JV partner. Uh, they would want to know if they're going to mail out, uh, how many people will be in return? And that will also impact how many they mail out to. So if they have a list of a quarter of a million, will you mail out to your quarter of a million list for them to make it worth their while? That, that's what I'm interested in. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, uh, basically, the, the answer is, in essence, yes, that there's, there's more nuance to it. When, when we actually get into the conversation, um, it really comes down to just tracking, right? We track clicks. Every, everybody tracks clicks and opt-ins, right? Um, if it's an email database, you know, we're going to, a, a normal email database, we're going to see a normal opt-in rate that we always get. And so are they. When we, when we mail back, they're going to see the same thing if it's a normal opt-in in a normal email database. Sometimes we do a deal with somebody who has a social media following. They have 500,000 social media. Um, well, we can't do click for click. We can't measure, you know, because because email traffic is way more powerful than social traffic. But I don't want to say no to that. So what we do in those cases is we count and track the opt-ins, right? How many people actually opted in? And then we return the same number of opt-ins. So it gets nuanced, but the idea, the bottom line is the whole point of the, of the, I'll call it a negotiation, right? It's a light negotiation 
Um, the whole point of it is to just be fair to both parties. That's the bottom line. We want it to be fair for everyone. Uh, and if they send us a thousand clicks and we get a normal opt-in rate, we're gonna send them back a thousand clicks. Excellent. We have at least three more questions. If you guys are okay to hang out just a few minutes past where we said we'd stop, I think we're on a, an information roll right here. I'm getting a lot out of this. So um, Karen, go ahead, ask your question. Yeah, it, it was just piggybacking on what they were saying. So if I, let me see if I understand it. So if you bring in somebody, bring in a joint, you know, joint venture partner, and you're essentially saying that all three of us are going to put something out for each other. Is that what you're saying? Or, or, or just the two of us that um, are going to get exposure on launch, uh, launch moxie? Is that what you're saying? Um, not exactly. I just to be okay. really precise, because I'm not sure if this is what you're saying. But basically, it's a two way exchange. The partner is promoting you, but promoting your freebie that we have on our system that we've done for you. Oh. Um, so essentially they're promoting you. You get those emails, that's your list as we've been saying, right? Um, and then we promote them back as if you were promoting them back. So it's, okay. it's a two way exchange between you, which is also us, <laughs> you and us on one side and them on the other side. Okay, all right, yeah, thank you. Cause I was trying to pressing that out. Okay, great. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, that. Sure. And Chris, I just want to make sure you know that you're getting so many compliments in the chats. This is wonderful. I have to rewatch it. There's so much great information. Someone else writing, there's a wealth of information. Feeling grateful for all of you shared time to upgrade on our freebie, LOL. <laughs> Thank you, etc. So there's a lot of love coming to you and, and the gratitude. Wonderful. And Thank you. Art, go ahead with your question. Yeah, I think it's, it's just a quick one. So our, with our freebie on launch, Moxie, I know you every week or something send us the, the emails. Um, I assume they're also then on a, a launch Moxie master list. So and, um, I think you, you guys already told me, but everything's GDR, PR or whatever. I get the initials mixed up, compliant. Yeah, yeah we're- will be we're, like on two lists, right? Yeah, we're can spam and GDPR compliant. Um, most people don't even know what the, what those really mean. <laughs> uh, we do. I have we a know. lot of foreign uh, customers. So. Yeah, uh, a lot of people assume GDPR and can spam mean certain things that it doesn't, and they don't realize it means other things. Um, we're very up on it. We've actually read the laws. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, we're in the business. It, it would be it would be uh, you know crazy for us not to have read the laws um right right you know we're in that business but uh but yes the there um yeah and then canada so there's three basically three to pay attention to the canadian law the american law which is can spam and the gdpr european law um those are really the only three that anybody needs to pay attention to really and um and we do <laughs> well no i just meant so when we get the emails from you we can upload them into our list and that's. Are you that's asking him if he writes the, if his team writes the copy for you? No, he's, he's I think he's asking if they're, no, no. if it's okay for him to be mailing to the people whose list we give them. And, oh. and the answer is yes, that they're opting into your freebie. You're the yeah. author. They're opting in to get your freebie and uh, that's your list. Yeah, great. Yeah. And we have some best practices in our little manual that I mentioned um, to make sure that you minimize people, um, you know, unsubscribing. And, and I, I think it's a fantastic deal. I just wanted to make sure it was clear how that works. Yeah, thanks for the question. And my final question to you, Chris, is I want another success story, but honestly, I get so, I actually learn sometimes when you explain how somebody was doing something and what happened. So we heard about Mark Waldman, fantastic. Is there someone like completely different who is an author co-op, maybe much like us, that we can relate to? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that you helped out, what happened, what they did, what they implemented? Sure, uh, lot, lots. A um, couple, of, couple of real quick stories. Uh, I, I like to tell this one because it, it uh, really emphasizes the unique value proposition. Um, Kurush, 
Astuari, I think that's how you say his name, uh, years ago, came to me with a, a, a book that he was writing and wanted to do his freebie and all that. And um, it was about uh, finances, right? And he was co- sort of calling it like the ABCs of business or ABCs of, finance, uh, of personal finance. It wasn't not business, but personal finance. And it was really weak. And he kind of knew that that was weak, right? And so I started talking to him about, well, what is it you're doing? And, you know, and he finally got around to telling me the story of how he even thought about doing this book in the first place, which was that he had seen an, uh, an episode of Oprah. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, and they were talking about money anxiety. And he said, I just really related to that. Everybody has money anxiety. I said, he said, I really want to just help people with their money anxiety. I said, well, then why don't you call your book the money anxiety cure? And he just went, that's exactly what I want to call it. Like, it just clicked, right? It's like, that's, it, that's exactly the point. And so the book is called The Money Anxiety Cure. You can see it on Amazon. Uh, Kurosh is his name. And um, it really just established his whole brain, right? His whole unique value proposition. Um, did the same thing with, uh, with Roy P from the, um, from the East, he's uh, in China. And um, he a very similar story. He came to me, uh, didn't quite know what he wanted to do at all, really. He, he just wanted to do sort of self, you know, personal development. I said, well, what do you, you know, what do you like doing? He said, you know, he said, well, I like doing my little emails that I send out to my list, you know, with little tips. I said, how little? He said, no, they're little, like little one line things or two line things. I said, great, you're the micro transformation guy. And, and again, same thing, he went, that's perfect for me. And so his whole brand became micro transformations, right? And he did a little ebook for it. He, he did the ebook like in two days. He, it was so, he was so excited, wow. like this is so perfect for me. Yes. And he put together his ebook in like his mini book, right? Freebie in like two days, sent it to me. We put it up online. It's one of our best downloads, right? So those are some examples. Chris, like you didn't even mention this. So this sounds like on top of everything else you were talking about, you can also, I mean, this is what I'm hearing, that these are people who are in the author co-op, and please correct me if I'm wrong or <laughs> confirm if I'm right, that you also help find a brand, you know, and obviously a title um, that can be repurposed everywhere. And then you also help them find their path, right? So you took what they do and put a name to it, which in turn ignited them because that's freedom. To yeah, know now, that is huge. Yeah. Now, some people don't need that. They already know what their, what their brand is and what their, but some people don't and they do need that help. And one of the things that uh, we do in that first meeting is we make sure that your unique value proposition is, is right on the nose and, um, and articulated properly. And if it's not, I'll help you do it. Yeah, that's also very helpful. I wanna say for people who are hyphens and a lot of people in the body, mind, spirit category, I have to say, are multi-talented. You know, they sing and they are also healers and they're authors and then they offer as a coach and it can feel like a major mushroom, you know, and how do you get that aligned to become very clear of what you put out there so people are clear about this is why I work with you. Um, so this is great. You clean up these little messes, it sounds like. <laughs> that's, a, that's one way to put it. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> you make little stars out of people. That's, and I get why this guy would have been so excited to write and impassioned to write his book, because that's clarity. That's all you need. Yeah, and it was an exciting enough, you know, touch, touch upon what he, his passion really was, that, that it just turned it on, right? Um, and that's, that's, that's when you know you've nailed it. Mm-hmm. Makes it so much easier to be you out in the world. Okay, so um, I want to thank everybody for coming today. I want to thank Christopher for the wealth of information you imparted to us. Really awesome. I have little scribble notes everywhere. I loved this. And I think, you know, if you even followed that much of what Christopher shared for your book, for your products, for your business, et cetera, coaching. This is, it's a game changer. This is the stuff that moves the needle. This is why experts are experts in what they do and why we hire them and all of us, right? For what we do in our own fields. This is why people come to us because they don't know what they don't know, we do. Um, 
And so, Barbara, I'm not sure I understand your question. Will he have a list of us if we sign up on the website? Yes, I'm quite sure that if Christopher taught this, that if you sign up on his website, launchmoxie or launchmoxie.com slash VIS, I promise, because um, this is what he was just teaching us, he will do the same. And um, thank you all again for participating. Uh, David said, thank you, Christopher. And I think this was just an excellent, excellent episode. The replay will be up. And I wish you all tremendous visibility in everything you do and in everything you so deserve that and many times over. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day and thanks.